All right, the recording has started. Welcome, everybody. Um, today is December 7th, and um, this is the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call. Um, today we have Adam Hauerwas from Providence College joining us to talk about integrating official student photos into Sakai. Um, before we get started with um, Adam's presentation, uh, I'd like to give a chance for updates. Um, and, you know, Neil, I'm usually turn to you for that. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah, I do have updates. Um, and so I'll start and others are welcome to chime in or uh, add in other um, other updates. Uh, so a few things. Let's see. First of all, a reminder that Open Aperio um, deadline for presentation submissions ends December 12th, which is this uh, coming up pretty quickly. Um, and I was thinking specifically that I'm not sure if we have like an Aperio teaching and learning boff or if we want one. Um, I don't know for Sakai folks if there's like a Samago boff, be it birds of a feather or not. So I don't think there are those kinds of birds of a feather submitted yet. And I don't you know, know the, if there's an interest level, but I thought I'd put that out there. So if you can get your, um, presentation ideas into the uh, uh, submission process, that would be really excellent. We're trying to get an early start this year as much as possible so that we can let people know what the program is ahead of time, which makes it easier for some folks to get justification for for the travel and, and conference. Um, so that's, that's one thing. Um, some other things, let's see, uh, there's just started some discussion on the Sakai core team about firming updates for Sakai 11.3 and Sakai 12. And just a brief overview, we don't have firm dates on them. Sakai 11.3 though does look like a pretty uh, important uh, maintenance release, above average. Um, you know, Sakai 11.2 was pretty awesome because we had like two, over 200 um, improvements, uh, fixes and things like that, which is, which is a lot, and I think it was like 20 some odd blocker priority issues that were fixed, so it was quite a bit. What's special about 11.3 is that it looks like we're going to have two major improvements done. One is um, Samago extended delivery that people really wanted, that, that feature that we were hoping to get in 11, but it turned out to be too complicated uh, and had different dependencies like an auto submit. So extended release is probably gonna get ready, for, be done for 11.3, and also the Turnitin integration um, which a lot of folks are waiting on. Um, we've got pull requests for those out there that need review. So th that's probably gonna be an 11.3.2. So those are two really big uh, improvements for the community. The timeline that we initially discussed yesterday, this was just yesterday, was something like getting the release uh, done by February. But uh, my concern is that uh, I'm not sure if we have enough QA resources to make that happen. But um, so we're starting to work on a schedule. And if anyone um, knows of QA resources, this is Sakai related, of course, um, you know, then it'd be good if you could speak up because uh, I think that's gonna be maybe the holdup uh, for the 11.3. And then 12, uh, for Sakai 12, again, preliminary discussions, the core team is thinking that we would uh, do something like a, um, what do we call it, a time box where we're gonna focus more on getting it out in a timely manner than we are worried about scope, because uh, there's a lot of possible things that might get into 12, but it hasn't been fully defined yet. Um, so for example, if, if we did a time box, then we're looking at potentially a, you know, a target date of May for release, which is a little bit aggressive. And also if 11.3 gets delayed and takes up some community resources, that could also impact it somewhat. Um, potential things that could go in Sakai 12 and include things like ru the rubrics project, which I know a lot of people are pretty excited about rubrics. Does Sakai turn to Trinity and work with the 10 until we get to 11? Jennifer asks, yeah, I do believe that there is, uh, um, institu our institutions with uh, Turnitin that are working on 10. Um, any sense of how many institutions are not upgrading to Sakai 11, but are waiting for Sakai 12? Uh, so I'll answer that question in just a second. That's a good one too. Um, so yeah, Jennifer, I do believe you can get uh, turn it in to work with Sakai 10, but I don't know these specifics, but I can help maybe connect you if you need that information with the right folks um, in the community who are, who've been working on, on turn it in. Um, 
so yeah, anyway, there's a, there's a lot of possible things that could go in 12. We have a Sakai 12 straw person on Confluence. I'm happy to share that link. Um, you know, it includes things, as I mentioned, rubrics, uh, uh, WCAG certification potentially will be done by then. Um, there's a lot of good movement on the Raleigh project for certification. I just, I'm, I'm not, and we're having a meeting today, I think, or was it last week? Anyway, um, I, we're making uh, progress is being made. I'm just not exactly sure of the timeline, and there's other other cool features too. So, um, so that's kind of the overview of Sakai release schedule. And to go back to Terry's uh, question of how many institutions are plan are upgrading to waiting for Sakai 12, um, Wilma Hodges from Longside and myself have been working on summarizing the uh, surveys that you all filled out, a number of people filled out, and we'll have those results hopefully pretty shortly. We're trying to review the, our summaries this week. Um, so hopefully with the next uh, you know, couple of weeks, we'll have something else to share. But I can tell you a lot of people are planning um, to upgrade to, in the net, a lot of, uh, most institutions are planning to upgrade uh, based on a sample size of like 37. So you have to keep that in mind, right? There's, there's two, you know, over 250 institutions that use Sakai uh, that we know of. And this is, so it's a relatively small sample, it's, you know, 10, 15% of the ones we know. Um, but of those 10 to 15% from the sample size, uh, pretty much just about every, almost every, all the institutions are planning to upgrade um, by 2017. They were all planning um, for Sakai 11. Nobody really knew about Sakai 12. Um, when Sakai 12 out, comes out, if we get it out in May, then timing may be a factor. So that institutions that were thinking about um, upgrading to Sakai 11, you know, I imagine they might consider whether they want to go to Sakai 12 or not, or you know, go with a a, a more mature Sakai 11. So, um, so I think that's the best I can answer that. Um, take a breath. Let me think if there's anything else. Uh, feels like there's a couple other things. Um, does anyone have any questions about project statuses? Neil, one question that I have, this is Adam from PC, is that you had said that 11.3 would include extended release for Samago. And for those who may not be familiar with the term, are we referring to the ability to uh, individually extend release times or um, uh, duration times for particular students in the class without adding them into a separate group? Yeah, thank you for clarifying that uh, or asking that clarifying question. Yes, um, you can, uh, with the extended release uh, feature of for Samago test and quizzes, which is the core test and quiz tool in Sakai that comes out of the box, you would be able to, for a particular exam, for any exam, you can set exceptions of when, uh, for on a group level or an individual level, and you can have multiple exceptions on each exam. So it's extremely powerful. Um, and for those individuals or groups, you can specify if it's a different start date, if it's a different due date, if it's a different um, retract date, and if there's a different amount of time that you're allocating. If you're using the time feature, if you're doing a timed assessment, you can specify um, if there's a different length of time that that group has or that individual has for the assessment. That's critical. Yeah. It's something the community's been wanting for a long time, and it's uh, really been a tough feature. I've been, uh, the developers have been um, um, wrestling with for a while. And it looks like we're just about there. I'm ready for QA. And there was and so, rejoicing. Yay! Yeah, and if we if there really is excitement in the community, like uh, it sounds like there is, one thing that could help to expedite the 11.3 release is to get um, QA participation. So when we get that feature ready to be tested, which we're very close to being at that point, uh, if I could do it, if I, you know, if we do a call for QA resources, if folks could step up, because uh, we're going to get a lot of QA on uh, on that feature in particular, and of course, to make sure there's no regressions that are introduced by it. So Samago is one of the most challenging tools because it's so complex to test, and this is adding additional complexity. And it looks like Mark um, Breshek posted the JIRA SAM1408 in the um, chat. That's that's correct. And although it says resolved, um, it got resolved initially, and then additional issues, if you notice, are linked off it in the uh, issue links and the subtasks, where then there were additional problems found, um, which is why it was turned off by default in 11. Oh, another big thing for 11.3 that, that the team is working on 
uh, and there's a JIRA for this as well, is that um, in 11.2, they turned off, in Sakai 11.2, the, um, I don't know how many of you, well, a lot of folks still aren't on 11 yet, but there's a really cool feature, uh, PA announcements, public announcement system that allows administrators to send announcements uh, you know, to the whole, to everyone on the system, and it has a lot of flexibility in the types of announcements and whether they are dismissible or not, and their timeframes or not. Um, on mobile, it was causing huge problems where when the announcement showed up, then you were not able to access Sakai at all. So for 11.2, the PA announcements was completely turned off, and we're hoping um, we don't have a, a code fix for it yet, but we're hoping we'll get we'll figure out the proper way to um, do that and. Um, get that fixed for 11.3 as well, hopefully. Uh, so, any other questions? I do have one other thing I, I think I'll mention um, that just occurred to me. Let's see. Louisa wrote, in light of Chuck Hedrick leaving the community, I'm wondering if the community or POC has any thoughts on the development of lessons. Um, yeah, that's a big topic, Louisa. That is a good point. Chuck Hedrick, uh, is has been the tool lead on lessons, and he's got a new position in Rutgers where he cannot devote as much time to working on Sakai as he would like. He's still been involved in, we've been very fortunate, he's still been involved in um, uh, uh, helping to uh, review and, and uh, do reviews of code contributions. So we are getting code contributions from other places. Uh, like uh, like Oxford, for example, and um, what Charles is doing is coming is, is reviewing those to make sure that they're up to standard. Um, so that's a bigger that is a bigger question, um, but I think that uh, yeah, that's a, I think that is a bigger question, Louisa. But that's kind of where things stand right now is we're still getting some some great contributions on lessons, and Chuck Hedrick is still uh, taking chunks of time to review um, contributions, which is really really cool to make sure the quality is is good. Um, is there an advantage to waiting for Sakai 12? Uh, that'll be an individual institution, Terry, when um, once we have Sakai 12, uh, I think it's probably too early to say, but once we have Sakai uh, branched for 12 and we know what then institutions will be able to make their own decisions about whether it makes sense for them to wait for Sakai 12 or not, uh, there's a lot of things to take into consideration, including uh, Usually the latest release of Sakai gets the most developer attention in terms of fixes, so that's a positive in general. But also initially, you know, .o releases usually do have more bugs than, than subsequent maintenance releases, so you take some, I think, additional risk um, with early adoption, although it also helps the community a tremendous amount in identifying issues. Um, and then it will be depend on the features and, you know, kind of what your institutional objectives are. So I don't think there's gonna be one pat answer for uh, whether an, a particular institution would wait for a, um, Sakai 12 or not. And the feature differences are still under, that might be a separate presentation that I don't want to eat up too much time. Um, that's still discuss, under discussion. There are potential things for Sakai 12, but I think that would probably be a separate discussion from right now. <laughs> a lot of good questions, but I hope I'm not eating up too much time. So. All right. Did you have one, another item, did you say? Um, well, it was, uh, you know, there's probably always more I could talk about. I don't want to take up too much more time. Uh, the thing okay. I was going to Maybe mention is, huh? Maybe at the end, if, if we have Okay, time. sure, sure. If there's time at the end, I could mention other things. But I think that covers um, the most important things. I do think were the, the um, call for proposals for Open Aperio and the um, status of Sakai releases. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, Adam, we are ready to turn it over to you to present on official pictures in Sakai. Fantastic. Thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity to present to the teaching and learning community. Um, first and foremost, I want to draw your attention to the users box in Big Blue Button, because I learned there were features playing around with this, such as updating your status icon and raising your hand. So I'm going to ask people to raise their hands if they have questions, because I may not always be able to pay attention to chat. And uh, Tricia and um, Neil, I know that you pay attention and raise questions as well, but that's cool. Um, I am curious. Curious, um, does anyone on the call currently use official pictures in Sakai or have an intent to? So if you're currently using it, uh, raise your hand. And if you have an intent to, let's go with thumbs up status. 
Okay, so Stephen Wicker and Tricia have it, and we've got four people who would like to at least. So that's good information to have. Um, we actually have been doing um, research in official pictures in Sakai and how to implement it. And this has been a desire of ours for probably a decade to have pictures in the learning management system since we were on ANGEL, uh, our initial LMS here at Providence College. Um, so this has been a long time coming. We've given a lot of thought to it. And fundamentally, we want to do this the right way to make sure that we don't jeopardize student information and meet faculty needs or desires for what they want in terms of personalizing the LMS. So the fundamental question, many of you are familiar with the profile to, tool, and uh, the default setting in profile is to allow users to upload their own photos. So if you visit the profile tool from my workspace, you would potentially not have a picture, and the default is to click on change picture and upload your own photo. But as you probably know, there's no control or vetting what people upload. They can upload a photo of their dog or a toad or something a little more salacious. And so how do we get from uploaded photos to an official picture, which would allow a reasonably consistent picture for all students and would require no action on the part of students to upload? So that's the topic for today, official pictures in Profile 2. Uh, on the left, you have an example of the roster tool where a few people here and there might have uploaded their photos. And on the right, you have an example of the roster tool with official photos for everybody. Well, in trying to get to that goal, I'm going to break things down into the technical and the political. So the technical, of course, are the set of Profile 2 settings that you would need to set, the set of Roster 2 settings that you might need to set, and then also working out the mechanics of where to get the official photos, how to transfer them, how to update them, and uh, potentially delisting those. Under the political, um, we've got the right to use pictures. Do you have the right to use a student's photo in the learning management system? And who has a say in that? Who are the stakeholders, such as student records, the card office, legal, uh, the provost's office, etc.? And then Lastly, what's the visibility? Should it be to the faculty only, or should it be student to student? And that, on the face of it, is a little more complex question than you might think, because um, you would think in a face-to-face -face class, <laughs> sort of by definition of face-to-face, -face, you can see the other students' faces. So why shouldn't you be able to see their picture in an online class? Well, you know, there are cases where student A might take a restraining order out on student B. So do you really want to give them access to that student's photo? Um, we're still teasing that apart. We're very close to implementation, but we just need to have a few more discussions in order to make sure that we do this, again, the right way. Now, to start with my favorite, the technical, we'll get to Profile 2 properties. Obviously, it starts with Profile 2. And there is a setting for Profile 2, Profile2.Picture.Type. And in that property, you would specify Upload, which allows uploads and is the default. URL, where you basically set an URL rubric to go outside to another provider. Or Official, where the official picture is the only picture. Now, this property sets the default source for pictures. You can still include official pictures even if this is set to upload. So there's another property, profile2.official.image.enabled, true or false, so you can enable official images. And then you can specify that source for official images. Now, Terry, you asked the question, could the individual overwrite the official picture with one he or she chooses? The answer to that is categorically no. 
official photos are official. And if they are enabled and stored in the file system, there is no way they can get to the official image in order to change it. They can only change the uploaded image and only if uploaded images are allowed. Now, continuing on with Profile 2, you can grant or remove the ability for users to update their picture on a user-by-user -user basis, or sorry, a user class-by-user -user class basis. So Profile2.Picture.Change enabled. And you can also do that for specific user types. So for instance, we have registered and maintained users. You could allow maintained users to change their uploaded photo, but registered users not. Now, there are far more settings for Profile 2 than I care to get into here. So there's a link to Profile 2 Overview, a link to the uh, Profile 2 settings, and also there are some slide shares where Steve Swinsberg initially presented on Profile 2 and contribu contribution to community. So that might be useful for overview. And a uh, link to this PDF will be stored on the Teaching and Learning page, so you can get to these links in this content later. Later. Moving on from Profile 2, there are also settings on Roster 2 that you need to uh, take into account. So uh, we're currently running Sakai 10, and pictures can be displayed in Roster 2 by clicking on the Pictures button within Sakai 10. Um, the default behavior when you click on this is to show pictures from Profile but then you can click a radio button in order to show official photos. The ability to click that radio button is controlled by the site permission roster.viewofficialphoto. So if you wanted students the, uh, to grant students the ability to see other students' photos within the roster tool, you might need to grant roster.viewofficialphoto to the student role within your course sites to make sure that they have that ability. Moving on from roster, pictures might be displayed in forum posts depending on yet another setting, which is profile2.profile.link enabled, true or false, and the default is true. Now, there are also some wrinkles this setting, in order for students to see other students' photos in, prof in forums or faculty to see students' photos in forums, it might require that the official picture be the only picture, but we'll get more on that later. Um, just want to take a pulse point here. Is timing okay? Any questions? I know it's a lot of information. Does Roster 2 have to be used in conjunction with Profile 2? My understanding was that Roster 2 was the default roster in community. Am I mistaken about that? Ah, correct. Yay. Uh, there was much rejoicing. Okay, good. So don't get confused with Roster 2 being something else that's been added on. I think roster is old and defunct. So let's move on. Uh, any other questions? OK, no hands. Some of the political issues that need to be taken into account um, are that you may need permission to use the student's photo. For our undergraduates at New Student Orientation, we ask them to sign a FERPA release form. Um, that release form does give us the right to use their photographic image for educational purposes. Not every student signs, so that is a consideration. It's told as sort of an urban myth, but I, I take it to be true, that in the state of Rhode Island, you don't have the permission to use someone's photo unless they expressly give permission for that. So this FERPA release gives us the opportunity to use their student photo in educational systems. Now, more politics 
what happens if a student revokes the right to use their picture? They might go into enrollment services and revoke their FERPA release. In that case, we might need a mechanism to remove the picture from Sakai if previously uploaded, because they might decide as a freshman that they want to share their information, and they might decide as a, a sophomore that they no longer want to. So how are we going to get the photo out of Sakai once it's been, been uploaded? And then, again, more politics. Who should see what? Should official photos be viewable exclusively from the roster tool or from forums, and should they only be viewable by faculty? Our implementation so far specifies that the official image is enabled, but the picture type is uploaded. So students can upload their own profile picture if they choose to, but we also have an official image behind that. The official image source is file system, meaning we upload them to the Sakai file system. The image directory obviously is specified, but I've removed it here. And there are settings for the directory pattern, whether or not they should all be in one directory or whether they should be broken out uh, alphabetically by the first initial of the student's username. So for larger implementations, um, you might have a different directory pattern in order to have fewer files in a single directory in the file system. Um, are the photos stored as blobs in Sakai's database? I honestly don't know. I believe that they're actually stored as discrete files in the file system, but uh, I would need someone else on our technical side to uh, answer that. Now, how are we getting the pictures there? Well, our student ID card pictures are stored in our SIS database as blob objects. We have a cron job to extract those blob objects to our SIS file system, and I'm having those transferred to a middleware server that I manage for massaging the data from the SIS that gets uploaded to Sakai for um, course creation and um, registration. So the files in my middleware server are named username.jpg, and I maintain a local directory with all of those pictures. Now, one of the advantages of maintaining all that in a local directory is um, the file names are username.jpg if they've given a release, and it's actually username.nopic dot jpeg if they do not have a FERPA release on file. So then what I do is I've got these two pictures stored as separate files, one of them being the blank picture from Sakai 10 and one of them being the blank picture for Sakai 11. And anyone who revokes their FERPA release to use their photo, we upload the blank picture as their picture. So in that way, their official photo becomes blank if they revoke their release. Now lastly, that directory in the middleware server gets synchronized to Sakai um, on a daily or multi-daily basis and ultimately integrated within the Sakai file system as the official photo. Moving on to forums. We've got these official photos up there, so they would display in roster two. Uh, usernames are user IDs, yes. So we've got these official photos up in Sakai, um, and they would appear in roster two, at a minimum for faculty. Now, official pictures in forums, though, where you have discussion and you might want to see somebody's face in order to say, oh, I know what that person is saying, I know what they've said in class, um, the official photo might not be displayed in forums, depending on settings. They would be displayed if official pictures were the only pictures, obviously, because if you have an official photo and it is your profile photo, then boom, it's in forums. But if you also allowed uploads, then the official photo is not the student's default profile picture. It is whatever they upload, and they might not have uploaded. So 
when you enable official photos, there is a new checkbox added to the profile tool for use the official institutional image as my profile image. So if you want to allow uploads and you have official photos, users would need to check this checkbox or upload a personal photo in order for the profile photo in forums to be visible. Yeah, oy, that sounds confusing. So I put official photos up, but I don't see them in forums until I do one of two things. Either I make official photos be the only photo, or each and every student has to opt in to having the official photo be their profile image. This decision path may lead some institutions to choose official photos as their only photo. And then um, you might uh, clobber some people's already uploaded profile photos. We're considering programmatically checking this checkbox for anyone who does not already have an uploaded photo. But again, we need to cover the political. We need to make sure that is something someone wants to do or wants to have done. Maybe someone should open Jira request to make it simpler. Oh, we'll get to Jira requests in a minute. I've got a good one. So uh, to close the loop on this, unfortunately, that checkbox requires students to opt in. And on the issue of whether official pictures should be the only picture, we've got a problem here where we've got at Providence College where we have official photos for our undergraduate school but we don't have official photos, ID photos, for our night school, for the School of Continuing Education. So you'll see this table, undergrad, we've got almost full coverage. Graduate, we've got partial coverage. School of Continuing Education, we have no coverage. And understand, it's the School of Continuing Education that predominantly hosts distance learning courses. So let's say, for instance, we adopt official photos as the only photo, we would be hamstringing the School of Continuing Education because by making the official photo be the only photo, students then can't upload. And then we are potentially severely um, limiting that face-to-face -face recognition or that social aspect of communication with photos in online courses simply because we don't have night school students coming to the card office to get their official photo taken. We might be able to provide a way for SCE to submit photos. That would require, again, politics and administration and closing the loop with the card office. Um, so take a pause here again. There are a lot of questions, and I apologize for not keeping up with the entire chat. Um, Providence have to have update on so that SCE can upload their own. We can't make SCE upload their own with day school not uploading their own without creating different user types. We might have to allow guests to upload their photos and then make SCE be guest accounts as opposed to registered accounts. That might work, but then it, it requires prior planning and modification of existing photos. I'd have to update someone's their official photo be the blank one. It, it could be part of SCE's orientation to their program, assuming SCE had orientation to their program. Again, this is night school. <laughs> Good. Thanks, Dave. Um, I'd like to move on to another possible issue related to student photos and official photos in Sakai, and that is modifications in the Roster 2 tool between Sakai 10 and Sakai 11. Um, Fundamentally, again, we're on Sakai 10. We have this functionality in order to click on pictures and see the pictures. Well, with Sakai 11, as it currently stands, there are smaller pictures in Roster 2. There is no control for the picture size. 
the control was removed for viewing the list in a single column, and the control was removed to hide names. I, I can sort of see the utility. If a faculty member wants to learn people's names, they might go to the Roster 2 tool, print it out single, or sorry, single column, and hide the names in order to test themselves. And there's no way to do that currently in Sakai 11. So, you know, I'm a little fearful in the implementing official pictures in Sakai under Sakai 10 and then updating to Sakai 11 and removing functionality immediately after I've introduced it because we're moving to Sakai 11 or Sakai 12 as of July. I have filed a JIRA on this. It's here on the slide, and the JIRA hasn't gotten any love. So if this is something that you feel is important and that might stymie your implementation of official pictures in Sakai, um, please upvote, comment, and maybe we can get some traction around this because uh, I think that it was a needed change for Morpheus, but possibly short-sighted in the removal of functionality. So I think that's my presentation. Um, are there any questions, discussion? Bueller? It looks like there are some um, questions in there. Oh, Bueller, huh? Okay. Um, so Dave, Dave uh, asks, how much time does it did it take for you all to get it in place from the, t the initial request to where you are now? Um, so. As I said, this is something that we've been thinking about for a decade. So a lot of thought went into the process, and as a result, we kind of hit the ground running with Sakai. We knew how we wanted it to work. Then it was a question of what the tools were in Sakai in order to bring it to fruition. Um, the request really uh, began gaming, gaining mo momentum in September. We began working with alongside our hosting provider in order to modify our test environment and see what's possible. I worked internally with people on the SIS side in order to get the photos across and the transfer mechanism. So, you know, off and on, this is something that we've been playing with for three months. Um, and uh, uh, I hope that this is something now people could take away and more quickly implement with an overview of what the settings and concerns are. Um, another question from, oh, uh, let me uh, uh, pipe back through. Davey, who made the request for student profile images? A faculty have been requesting this for a long time, so the official request came from the VPAA or provost's office to a steering committee for the LMS. Um, Charles Bristow, how do you deal with photos for non-students? Are there official photos or are they strictly upload? Um, for staff and faculty, we do have profile images from the PC card office. We need to find out legally whether we have the right to use those images as well. So talks with human resources. And then if in fact uh, that's cleared, we can modify the SQL query that pulls the blob, uh, blob objects out of the SIS, which is also our personnel system, in order to get faculty and staff images across. Um, how would you handle students asking to have their photo updated? Um, students' photos actually in this um, system are automatically updated whenever they have their student ID photo updated because the ID photo then gets updated in the SIS and will automatically flow through the system. So their official photo is whatever is on their ID card. If they lose their ID card and have a new photo taken, that new photo will flow through. And if we continue to allow 
um, self-service updates, so we allow uploaded profile photos, then students could upload their own. But, but again, with the <coughs> caveat that that may or may not appear in forums. Um, Jennifer, are you able to combine in the roster the official photos and the picture from profile so an instructor sees them all on one roster page? Um, the two buttons, I don't know whether you can show both official photo and uploaded photo on the same roster page. Possibly that would be an enhancement request for roster two in Sakai 11, as long as we are opening that for return of functionality for photo size and single column. What SIS do we use? We are a banner shop. Oh, uh, Laura, sorry, not two photos, but whichever one is more recent. <laughs> that could be interesting. Um, don't know. In general, I mean, so uh, almost anything like that can be done, but I would imagine that it probably wouldn't be done in Sakai, but maybe it would be done like pre-processing the images before they get to Sakai somehow. That would well, be my guess. what I could see happening is it would be nice if there were a mechanism such that the official photo became the profile photo if there was no uploaded photo. And then the student could update their profile photo if they wanted something other than the official picture. So then the official picture were to stay in the system and still be visible with the official photo's radio button, but that it be their profile photo until they opt for something else. It, true, but then the student uploads a photo of their dog. Again, there's no control over what gets uploaded. But it would at least be sort of a middle-of-the-road approach to make the official photo be their profile photo until they tell us they want something else. <laughs> um, has anyone not had their question answered? Laura, you still have your hand up. Oh, I was thinking of turning on my microphone. What the heck? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, this is a very interesting discussion. The, um, the question about um, restraining orders and stalking and FERPA could be answered that way. Thanks, Dave. Uh, could be answered that way, too, because if it were to work the way uh, you just recently proposed, just a few minutes, seconds ago, uh, then the uploaded picture overwrites what people see for the official picture. And, you know, if you're afraid of being stalking, then stalk, then go ahead and put your dog picture in there. Or there would have to be a control in profile two that says my photo is visible to no one. So mm -hmm. manually give them the ability to opt out of their photo being shown. Uh, but the, again, Official photos via roster two for faculty might still be a way to appease faculty in order to know their students' faces. Oh, good point, yeah. Um, if there are no other major questions or discussion points, I do want to do a shameless plug for Mighty Project Sites. Um, Mighty Project Sites is, of course, a separate group that once a month discusses project sites in Sakai. Um, we meet on the second Wednesday of the month, and there's been some declining membership uh, over time. So just a heads up, if this is something that might interest you, our next meeting is next Wednesday on December 4th, conveniently sandwiched between teaching and learning calls. So just wanted to bring this up. And lastly, I wanted to thank you for the opportunity to present. Adam, thank you so much. Um, this was really interesting and a lot of good conversation going on in the chat that um, uh, you've answered most of the questions that I saw come through. Um, thank you for taking the time to present on this topic because I know we've been wanting to hear about this more for a while. 
so um, it's really great of you to, to make time to do it. Uh, um, Laura, Laura, in answer to your question, that is my uploaded photo. It is my head in a jar, and I really do look like that. People on the call who've seen me can tell you. <laughs> okay, we've got some confirmations from a few folks that you do. Yes, indeed look like that. Thanks again, Adam. And uh, so we've got a couple of other um, things to talk about. We've got a few minutes. So our upcoming meeting schedule, I've posted it in Etherpad. Let me post that link again in the chat um, for, for everyone. And if also, if you haven't signed in to Etherpad, this would be a good time to do that. Um, so we need a topic for our next scheduled meeting on December 21st. Um, we do not have one. So if anybody on the call has some ideas and is willing to uh, lead a conversation or a presentation on the 21st, that would be awesome. Otherwise, we'll probably cancel. We do have some topics scheduled. Oh, Laura, your Christmas shopping or baking that day. Awesome. Good for you. I know a lot of people are probably going to be out um, already. Dave says he'd like to hear how people are leveraging the new features in 11, the Pi 11 lessons. That could wait until later in the year. Yeah, that would be that would be great to hear more about. And maybe as more people adopt it too. Um, so again, later in the year, that's a great suggestion. Be a panel. That's a perfect idea. So, do we have any volunteers to um, participate on a panel? Maybe not on the 21st, but all right. Well, be thinking about it, and uh, perhaps a little later in the. Dave says he'd also like to hear about some LTI tools from course text publishers capable of returning grades to, to Sakai since it's LTI 2. And, okay. LTI tools that are. Um, with the grade book. Uh, so January 4th, we have easy tips for increasing student and grade engagement, which was a great um, topic that I facilitated at the Sakai Virtual Conference um, delivered by Laura Fogel and Stephanie Bryant, and they're going to join us on the 4th to um, present that again. I think it's really a great topic, and I'll, they have some great ideas. And then on the 18th of January, Sally Bryant and Grace Ye from Pepperdine are going to present on Better, Better Together, Sakai, and SIPX. Um, so thanks for the a couple of suggestions. Uh, Jennifer says, could we do a small panel of those who upgraded to 11 or hear from those who are planning to and tips for tricky issues? That could come along with the same um, with lessons, I think, that, that could be combined or it could be um, noted as a separate item. Thanks, Jennifer, for this. So, you know, of course, it's it's always great to suggest, but if we don't have people who are willing to actually do these things, then it doesn't happen. So um, it's up to all of us to volunteer. Those of us who have already upgraded to Sakai 11, um, if they're willing to uh, to do that. It might take a little uh, time for people to get to the point where they're ready to talk. To do that, um, you can bring it up again. Thanks for the idea. 
And Neil, I know you have a couple of suggestions. Oh, sorry, Linda, I missed yours. Interested in how people are handling custom skin. A lot of um, focus around using the word. <coughs> Go ahead, Neil. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah, nothing that urgent. I uh, want to remind people that today there is an accessibility, Sky Accessibility Meeting at 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, that's a meeting that happens uh, every other week. And, uh, you know, can always use additional help in reviewing accessibility issues, testing them, thinking about how to move things forward. Um, I thought I'd mention uh, also that I did a blog post on Sakai 11.2. I don't know if you all saw it, which would be interesting to know if you even know it's there and whether you think it is, if you have a chance to read it, whether you think it's actually, you know, valuable or not, like it's, if it's helpful. Um, that's on Sakai. Uh, I'll look up that in just a second, Terry. Sakaiproject.org. If you go to sakaiproject.org and click on news, you can see that. The um, room is room four. Sean's right. Yep. It's a big blue button, room four. Um, and uh, I wanted to mention Slack and Twitter, kind of social media stuff that I've been playing with different ways uh, of getting automatic calendar notifications out to Twitter and out to Slack channels to remind people of meetings. And so uh, I just thought, you know, like there's an Aperio one that 15 minutes before the meeting, if you're um, on that Slack channel, you'll get a notification of the meeting and what room it's in. So you don't have to remember what room it's in. Um, I've been playing with it because sometimes you reach a certain limit uh, on the tool that's doing that automated thing and then it cuts you off and then you have to start over and thinking about getting a paid account and so forth and so on. So just kind of an FYI and something I may try and um, uh, move along on, um, uh, you know, try and make it more consistent so that you could subscribe to Twitter or subscribe to certain channels. So if anyone's interested in that, let me know, because it'd be interesting to know if people want to use that sort of functionality to remind them of meetings and rooms. Trisha reminds me, yeah, we're doing, uh, the marketing group uh, is, uh, uh, there's a company, um, it's a for-profit company called G2 Crowd. They have a really interesting site where you rate, people rate software. There's been volunteers jumping on and rating Sakai software, mostly pretty good. And they have some interesting um, marketing options uh, for us. Uh, and so they're going to do a presentation for the marketing group this Friday. If you're interested in participating in that, let me know. Uh, it would be nice to get a few community members um, to see the presentation and see if there's anything there. They're, they they are for profit, meaning that some of the services they offer cost big bucks, and then we'd have to figure out is this something of interest and exciting to the community? Because marketing Sakai, obviously, I, well, to me it's obvious, and to some others it's obvious that that should be an important priority for the community. And um, you know, what's the right way to do it? And can we do crowdfunding to get some resources to to help us do some professional marketing? So if you're interested, let me know about that. Um, I see some cool stuff going on in the chat about uh, LAMP using lots of different custom skins. Um, and the other thing I thought might be interesting is that we've been getting some interesting like uh, courses that have over time. So this is maybe a tickler, like a couple, We you know, last year we had a course at Texas State, a marketing uh, course that worked on how to market Sakai and produced a report that generated some cool ideas. And the year before that from Marist College that produced some good ideas the challenge, of course, is we don't have resources necessarily to implement all the good ideas or analyze them. Um, and then there's also user experience testing that's going on. We're getting, there was, uh, and, and, and classes on how to contribute to open source. So we had a class at Duke uh, last year, or actually was it this year? I think it was this year, earlier, a really fun class on a computer science class on how to contribute to open source. That was really interesting that used Sakai in different ways. Um, and there's also some user uh, experience testing classes going on. So recently just got some feedback from um, a class at actually Indiana University um, of a couple of students who did some UX testing on Sakai that I'm sharing with the UX group. And uh, there's another one at Indiana University, a capstone class that we're um, some of us are talking with an instructor there. So I just thought that was interesting that there's all sort of like little um, class, that there's class, I shouldn't say little, that there's classes, you know, on computer science and open source, on human computer interaction, on UX testing um, that 
you know, there are programs that actually want to, that have been reaching out to us uh, to, to do classes on it. So I just thought that was an interesting thing to share. Um, that's it. I think that's all I got. Thank you, Neil. Uh, there's a few more comments going on in the chat. Uh, Martin Ramsey has been suggested as a good person to talk to about skins. I think you just said that. And I'll reach out to him. Um, Gary, thanks for that tip. Okay, thanks, Laura. Talked to him about that form several months ago. Uh, let's see. Louisa says Duke is also looking to create a UX style sheet for Sakai. Ooh, that you just discussed in the UX meeting. Yeah, that'd be interesting for um, an upcoming. Um, maybe you could alert us when they're further along and, and ready to present on. All right, folks, um, if anybody um, has any other comments or questions, now would be the time. I, I think we're, I don't have any definite volunteers for December 21st, so I'm probably, we're going to cancel that meeting. I don't think we're going to be able to um, have a presenter on any of these topics. But yeah, I think. So close to the holidays, yes, agreed, Neil. Um, probably better just to cancel that one and, and wish you all a happy holiday since we won't be meeting again until after the end of this year. Okay, folks, so we can be adjourned. Really appreciate everybody attending and especially Adam for presenting today. Thanks, all. My pleasure.